Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that had they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be signs for us of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. On the first day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, 
Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying the jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came to, with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Truly not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When he had sung the hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Even though I'll become deserters, I will not. Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him was a crowd of, with swords and clubs from the chief of priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them signs, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they lay, laid hands on him and arrested him. But once of those who stood near drew so, his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. 
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Why do you still need witnesses? Have you heard of the blasphemy? What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl began again to say the bystanders. This man is one of them. I am not. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to the Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish for me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Why, what evil has he done? Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole court. And they clothed him in purple cloak, and after twisting thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck him in the head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a school. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, and he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified him. 
two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him and shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. Which means? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the currents of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, I want to take a, a little pause in the beginning of the homily here and talk about the political context in Galilee for the first Palm Sunday. I know that we don't like to be political here in church, and it's important that we're not. Maybe we could say that we're not partisan, but we're always political, because political is just the way we get together. Like when you stop at a stop sign, you're being political. You're not being partisan, but you're being political, because you're joining with the others and figuring out our common life together. The reason I say that now is Palm Sunday is a very political Sunday for us, and it remembers a politically charged event. I I want to talk about it a little bit. When we go back to the time of Jesus for the first Palm Sunday, the context was one of extreme poverty. Extreme poverty, and there was a foreign overlord, the Romans, who controlled Galilee at that time and Palestine. So Jesus was living his life under the thumb, under the boot of Rome, and Rome was taking their tribute out of, of that area and everywhere they ruled and bringing it to Rome, which is why Rome, the city of Rome was so rich. They were taking it from other places. So what Rome did was they had a governor and named Herod, and Herod was Jewish. So they were, Romans were pretty smart. They frankly hated Jewish people, and they tried to exterminate them after Jesus' death and resurrection, after this event of Palm Sunday. But they installed someone who was Jewish, so a, a classic collaborator type. And Herod ruled with his family. We, we think he had about 400 people in his family, an extended ruling family. So he had 400 people who had access to enormous wealth, And then there were people in the population who collected taxes, the tax collectors. They were collaborators also because they were the way that Rome collected the money and brought it to Herod's family and then to Rome. So Jesus grew up in a very, very difficult environment, political environment. Dom Crossan, who's a scholar, thinks that most people who woke up in the morning in Jesus' area, when Jesus was alive, the first thing they thought about was, how will they get enough food for the day? Imagine that level of food insecurity. You wake up and you think, how am I going to feed myself and, and my family for the day? 
Because Herod's family, his 400 people, took about half the wealth in that area, and the rest were very hungry. So this was a politically charged environment that Jesus was in as he and the disciples went to Jerusalem. And when Palm Sunday came, that was the beginning of the Passover. Now, the Passover was a religious celebration at the time, but it was also a festival. And it was a time for people to gather. They didn't have weeks like we do where they have a weekend to rest. These were times of rest and they were seasonal. They had to do with the lunar calendar. People took time off. They were, they were pilgrims and spiritually focused, but they were also enjoying life and relaxing a bit. And that's when trouble could happen for the overlords. So what would happen is Herod would come down from his seaside. He had a great, gorgeous area up north of Jerusalem, where he lived, he would bring the Roman garrison down and march right through Jerusalem at the beginning of Passover. A big parade of power, of military might. Now, the fascinating thing for Palm Sunday is when Jesus makes his procession into Jerusalem, he's on the exact opposite side of Jerusalem. So you have Herod come in here with the Roman garrison, Jesus times it perfectly. He's coming in on a donkey, and people are throwing the palms in front of his feet. Herod's coming this way. Jesus is over here. And he's almost making a mockery of this uh, thought of being safe through military power. It's almost like Jesus is making a mockery of that. And they're calling him king and hail the king. And we do it ourselves, don't we? In the liturgy, we remember this. So Palm Sunday is a highly charged political event that happened when Jesus entered Jerusalem. And the politics are important because Jesus is helping us see in the spiritual message that he brings that that physical power does not give us spiritual grace. Physical power will never give us spiritual grace. Physical control doesn't either. This is when when Jesus comes through the other gate, the opposite gate of Herod. He's telling us that our security and our strength relies on God alone and God's love for us. And so Palm Sunday, we, we claim that we're political because we live together and we're organized. We're not partisan here, but we also remember that Jesus was fighting against a very tough political system that Rome had imposed in that area and in many other areas as well. And so on this Palm Sunday, as we remember the saving grace of God that comes to us through Jesus and reminds us that God's love is what keeps us safe and gives us authentic, true power, on this Sunday, it's helpful to pause I wonder how you would think about All Saints, this parish here that we're in. How would you think about All Saints being a political place? I have been told as the interim many, many times, All Saints is a big tent, and we have all kinds of political partisan beliefs, so we're careful, and we should be, and I honor that. At the same time, we do think politically. And sometimes, and maybe on this Sunday, we can, we can dig into that a bit. I would say the, the strongest political statement All Saints makes is the day school right over there. The day school is a political statement. It says, we believe in education, and we believe in strong education, and we bring in the challenge foundation that comes and helps us bring students in, so we believe in that diversity that education can bring. These are political statements. Education is important. And so we do it really, really well here at All Saints. You should be really proud of the school. They're wonderful. They're doing a great job. And they're teaching the values that we have here in the parish, the baptismal covenant. So we are political. And I encourage you to be political. The politics for us, are the same politics of Jesus. Jesus worried about people being fed. He worried about economic justice where people can have enough to be God's disciples in this world. 
And so I encourage you to think how you can live that. Often we, we focus on our personal spiritual life, and that's very important. Today, I'm inviting you to think about our collective spiritual life here at All Saints and the political statement we make through education. Now, as you find a new rector, which we, we expect him or her to come in in about six months, as you find a new rector, you're going to start a new spiritual journey and a new spiritual adventure, and there'll be wonderful, positive changes. And one of those might be another large kind of ministry, like the school. Imagine a large collective ministry here around outreach, where everyone's working together with a common vision to help the hungry, the homeless, maybe vets who are, who are hurting or homeless, to help someone in this, in this community, to help them experience the grace of God, to do that personally, which you all do very well. But you're so smart, and there's so many of you, and you've done such a great job with the school. What's your next large political statement? That's one of the questions that Jesus' actions on Palm Sunday ask us here now at All Saints. And so I pray that you enjoy your Palm Sunday, that you, you move through this gateway of, you know, joy and, and Jesus, the procession, and then, the, you know, into the arrest of Jesus and, and, and into the crucifixion and beyond. I pray that you, that you, you, you walk that path yourself in a way that will renew your commitment to being a citizen in this country and in this community and to helping those who are hungry and homeless and poor as our baptismal covenant guides us. The Prayers of the People. On this day, when Christ enters Jerusalem to die, we pray with Christ in his suffering for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, for our nation, for countries in conflict, for all who serve under arms, for all victims of human violence, and for the peace of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For those who have courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those weighed down with hardship, failure, or sorrow, for those who have suffered through natural disaster, and for all who feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, you have called us to be your children and have promised that those who suffer with Christ will be heirs with him of your glory. Arm us with such trust in him that we may ask no rest from his calling 
and have no fear in his service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship at All Saints Episcopal Church, Phoenix. I'm Pastor Emily Finn. Um, thank you for joining us for our Palm Sunday worship. This begins our Holy Week worship this coming week, and we invite you to join us for Holy Week and Easter. Um, the Holy Week services are all outside in the close garden, and Easter Day will be here online and also over at the day school outside in the pavilion. The schedule is on our web website and in the e-blast and on the Facebook page. So we invite you to join us in person and online for any and all of our, our scheduled services. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. 
he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for us, the beloved people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, give us gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. Keep firm in the hope that you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.